welcome to Rockdown. I'm Wendy Stapleton, uh, coming to you live from Musicland. We've got a fantastic show tonight. Uh, on a whirlwind trip back to Australia, songwriter, singer, composer, producer and actor, you name it, he's done it, Mr Keith Glass. Yeah. The very, very funny Elliot Goblet. My two very naughty imps, the girls that go out and about on town, have done an interview with uh, Bob Bongo Starkey from Skyhooks. Yeah. All right. And my very special guest, direct from Nashville, Nashville, is the one and only Mr. Brian Cadd. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's good to have you back. Well, thank you all. It's mighty fine. Isn't it good fine. to have you back? Yeah. Yeah. And Smart. I think probably Nashville's good to have you coming back Go on. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They did give me a warning. I'm maybe. only joking. I'm only joking. No. But, of course, you've been writing over in Nashville mm. and you've come back for a very, very special reunion tour. Can you tell everybody what you, well, what you and Glenn Shorick are up to? We've only done this half a dozen times, but every 25 years... Hang on, hang on. You can see people with their calculator. Going. I don't know, okay. That can't be right. Uh, we get together about every 10 years and we do, we normally just do a tour, but a couple of times uh, back in the um, Blazing Salads days, we had an album to go with a tour. And this time we have an album to go with a tour. And we're actually touring, you know, forever for us. We're touring from the uh, beginning of November to the end of May. And then we're going immediately into rehab after that. <laughs> well, that, but that's a pretty decent tour. For old guys, are you kidding? Come on, that's it's a serious tour for anyone. I know, we are. We're strong, we're brave. So we... what are you going to... Hang on. We've got, we've got a CD here. This is a new one. It's called The Story of Sharky and Catman. The yes. Catman. Um, can we show this? Yes. Well, we probably just Look at fleet, that. fleetingly Look we can. Look at those gorgeous babies. Aren't we young? See how young we were there. We were young. And get, look at all you old guys. <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, Sharky, it's called Sh Sharky and the Cadman. Well, the Cadman bit's fairly obvious. But the reason why it's called Sharky is because years ago when he was touring with Little River Band in America, the American crews could never say Shorick. They always said Shark. Shark. Sharky. Instead of Shark. So pretty soon it got to be Sharky. And for the whole time he toured America, unfortunately, he was known as Sharky. So... Whereas in Melbourne he was known as Sharon. That's right. <laughs> and you, it was your fault too. And he always used to say to me when you guys did that tour... No, you used to say to me, didn't you? When you used to both do Tina Turner, you used to say to me, he's got much better legs than I am. It was terrible to have to go on after him. I don't actually believe that. Do you believe that? <laughs> oh, you believe that? <laughs> that right on to him. Yes, I'm sure you'll ask him to actually wear them during the tour as well. So what can we expect from the tour? Well, a lot of waxing, obviously. Yes, yeah. Now, yeah. But, um, oh, it's, a, it's what it really is. It's like a, a trip through memory lane. We start right back in the beginning, before we were actually even artists, going back to that part. And we just go through the whole gamut, including, which is very special for us, there's a section in the middle which is an axiom section. And it's really the first time Axiom have played together for 44 years. One of the first bands I ever saw. That's really good. <laughs> you well, were what, 12 or something? Yeah, I was. No, but, but for us it's a, it's a great thrill, you know. We, we stopped in, in 71 and here we are, we're playing again. So it's two hours of all of the stuff that's happened to us. Okay, so tell us who's in the band. Well, we, uh, there's Sherrick and I, <laughs> Sharky and I. And, uh, and Doug Lavery, the, the drummer from Axiom, yeah. and Chris Stockley, who not only was the guitar player for Axiom, but he was also in The Dingoes and later on Stockley, C and Mason. And we're very lucky that the other players are Glyn Mason from Stockley, C and Mason and Sam, Sam C. C. And a beautiful young player who's got a, an old heart like ours, Jason Voorhe, 
who is currently playing with almost every band in Australia. Yeah, he's a very busy control. boy. He's very busy. He's lost all his hair now as a result of that. So it's been good. It's been lovely. Well, speaking of young talent, we're going to show you a clip, Brian. I'd like to know what everybody thinks here. We've got a gorgeous Australian girl, Jessica Page. This is a clip. Whoa! I must, I must throw this in, even though it's not supposed to be thrown in, but Jessica is the daughter of a, a fabulous Australian artist who not long ago was on, was it X Factor? No, uh, ABC. Australia's Got Talent. Australia's Got Talent. Mr. Steve Romick. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is your beautiful daughter. And, and the song is called Only Let Me Down. So let's have a look at Jessica Page.
a very, very, very special guest tonight is Mr. Brian Cad. Oh, come on! <laughs> Cadman. Cadman, so what, what did you think of uh, young Jess's clip? She's beautiful. Oh, the song. No, I liked her. I liked her. And, and you know, she represents our future. She, she, with her fabulous individual look and a great song. And I think that those young artists who are really doing unusual different things I agree. are where we're always going to go, as opposed to the ones who are a bit like the Americans or a bit like the English. They'll sort of fade away. But... The really unique ones are the ones we'll that will make, make it. it yeah. We'll make it. So there's uh, some new young talent. And we have our next guest who's actually been around for... Oh, a year and a half. A year and a half? <laughs> Quite a few years. Over 60 television performances, thousands of performances live throughout the world. Would you please welcome the very, very gorgeous Elliot Goblet. <laughs> Thank you very much, Wendy, for that fantastic introduction. <laughs> Beautifully read. <laughs> yes, I'm Elliot Goblin, and it's great to be here. Not too many people know this, but I am multilingual every time I perform these days. I do my entire act in a different language. Tonight I've chosen English. <laughs> Although some of my pauses are in Spanish, so do watch out for that. I'd like to change the pace a bit now. <laughs> Do you ever wonder what would happen if you experienced a cool breeze in the heat of the moment? Would they cancel each other out? Food for thought, isn't it, eh? I like to do things that really turn people's heads, like tapping them on the shoulder with a pineapple. I like to flirt with danger and use my shampoo after my conditioner. I used to be a drummer for a band called Cancelled. Innovative name, but nobody ever turned up to our gigs. <laughs> I bought a guitar on eBay for $32, and I was really happy with my purchase until later when I realised that I'd bought an air guitar. <laughs> Can't help bad luck, eh? Last year, I went to Thursday Island on a Wednesday, and for an entire day, I just couldn't get into my holiday. took me a lot longer when I went to Easter Island during Christmas. <laughs> Recently I bought a can of worms for no other reason than to say that I've actually opened a can of worms. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit sad right now because my new kitten ran away and obviously wanted to make it a complete break because the kitty litter's gone too. A few years ago, I was going to travel around the world, but I decided to stay in Australia because I met so many nice people at my going away party. <laughs> and I'd just like to say that I do all of my own choreography, every little bit of it. <laughs> I was born a twin, but sadly we've grown apart over the years, so much so that he's now two years older than me. <laughs> and a transvestite. I've just had my 40th birthday celebration. Which, as you can imagine, was well overdue. <laughs> Actually, last month I hit the big 5-0, 50 friends on Facebook. <laughs> Whenever I go out socially, I'm a pretty mild-mannered sort of individual, but I'm a crazy man in bed when I'm by myself. <laughs> Nobody tosses and turns like I do. Crazy. I'd like to change the pace a bit now. An ex-girlfriend told me she wanted a bit more mystery in our relationship, so one night in bed I wore a Zorro mask and asked her to guess who. I hate it when you're in a motel room under the shower giving yourself a really good scrub and you realise you've been using the white bath plug instead of the soap. That happens to me all the time. I hate it when you're at Luna Park sitting down having a big yawn and somebody tries to stick a table tennis ball down your throat. And geez, I hate that. hate it when you're having a really good hair day and you're not going out anywhere. I never have those days. This is the recession I had to have. I have a total of three and a half alcohol-free days a week. I don't drink every day of the week for the first half of the day. You like that one? 
Okay, if you like that one, that's yeah, that's good. Now. Okay. <coughs> I thought eventually I'd come across a line that you guys liked, and that's uh, and it's important that you're happy because uh, I'm only here to please you two guys. The rest of the people are supplementary. Mm. <laughs> so if you hear another one you like, just yell out, "I like that," and, it, and I'll know I've done my job. Lost my place now because of that interjection. Hello, I'm Elliot Goblet. It's great to be here. I haven't had a smoke for over three years now. How about that, eh? Not that impressive when you consider that I've never smoked. <laughs> just to confuse cab drivers, I like to hail a taxi and when it pulls up, I'll just do a runner. <laughs> just to confuse people, I like to hang my washing on other people's lines with a note which says, have you seen these missing clothes? Just to confuse people on my back, take two. Just to confuse people on the back of my car window, I've got a sign which says, driver on board. <laughs> I got thrown out of a classy hotel for knocking on all the doors and introducing myself as the new neighbour. <laughs> I got thrown out of an art gallery during an exhibition of nude paintings because I streaked. <laughs> and they wouldn't accept my argument that sometimes life imitates art. You like that, okay. You like the raunchy ones, the nude ones, nudity. You know, I've got an optometrist called Natasha and she's a bit kinky and I know this because her eye chart has alphabetical letters that spell out crude words. And if you fail to read the chart correctly, you get spanked. Now my eyesight's important to me, so I go in for an eye test every week. <laughs> I know what you're all thinking right now. I bet Elliot Goblet is shit at welding. <laughs> and you'd be right. But it doesn't make me feel any less of a man. I hate it when somebody comes to your front door and puts their finger over the peephole. So to get around that, I've got 11 peepholes. <laughs> and whenever I'm standing in a queue, I'm really paranoid that somebody's going to push in, so I'll always stand hard up against the person in front of me. And it doesn't take long before people let me just pass through to the front counter. <laughs> My time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. The gorgeous Elliot Gobless. Would you please welcome back Mr. Jack Levi. Yes. Yeah. I'm confused. I'm confused. It's the change of glasses. Uh, totally alters my appearance. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Now, Jack Levi and Elliot Gobbler are co-tenants in the same body, just in case people didn't pick it up. How did it all start? Where did you find Elliot? Elliot, oh, Elliot is just uh, an extension of myself and an expression of my fantasy. So, uh, a great ve vehicle, really. And where it all started, um, I did a talent show years ago. Well, I started at a place called The Joke, which a lot of people here would be familiar with. Is that in... Um, it was upstairs last laugh. Last laugh, Smith Street, yeah. Collingwood. And after a few months of a bit of trial and error, mostly error, I actually cobbled together about four minutes of material that I was proud of. And, uh, and I did an audition for a show called You're a Star, hosted by Tim Webster. Yeah. Right. And... Uh, and that spot went, and, and one of the judges was Keith Potka. Yeah, and he really, oh, really? liked my stuff, which was great. He uh, was a guest on our show last week. Yeah, I believe so, yeah, yeah. And now you're actually encouraging other comedians through a little club called... The Crimson Goat Cabaret Club. Yeah, it's a bit of a sideline for me. I, I, uh, together with Mitchell Faircloth, a.k.a. Slim Whittle, um, we lamented the loss of our great cabaret scene from the late 70s, early 80s and decided to start up the Crimson Goat Cabaret Club, which is at Ormond Hall. Beautiful venue. So what sort of setup is it? Like a, do tables people come chairs, in with tables yeah. and chairs? Do they bring their food and...? 
drinks or... No, no. Actually, it's you all get there. everything there. Yeah, you Everything's can, there. Yeah, you can get everything there, which is crazy. It's not a picnic. No, no, no. no yeah. the only reason I ask is because Ormond Hall, of course, back in the... 70s. 70s oh, yeah. was... Had none, no, yeah. none of that. Had none of that. But it was, but it, was yeah. um, it was a famous gig. The Reefer yeah. Cabaret, you're talking about? Yeah. No, 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 way before Opus. That. Opus before Opus. that. It was Opus. The best you could get was a Fanta. Is that right? Yeah, you wouldn't have been happy with that, Brian. No, no hell no. <laughs> well, that, happy at all. It's yeah. amazing how many things you can put in a fanta and have a good time. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I'm sure you've done that all. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's okay. no need to be like that. No, 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 no. So we can always edit that bit out if you're offended by it. No, yeah. I'm not offended. Okay. No, no. Okay. Well, not much. It's the Jack Levi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be back soon. Down. My guest tonight is Mr. Brian Cadd. Thank you. <laughs> and a very special guest who has come back to Australia for a whirlwind trip. Ooh, ooh, whirlwind. Singer, songwriter, producer, actor, journalist. You Pole name dancer. it. Pole dancer. Pole dancer. <laughs> Lap dancer. As well. Left answer as well. Would you welcome Mr. Keith Glass? When you did that before, I just had no idea who you were introducing. It was you. Oh, I thought it was Brian. Yeah. It, was it was you. Was now, oh. when I say just back for a whirlwind tour, um, of course, Keith, you started in the music industry in Australia in the 60s. I did. Campact? About the same time. Oh, no, I was in bands before. I was in a, had a high school band. I think I saw Brian play the Second Hampton Scout Hall <laughs> in about 1965. Was he I'm dressed mistaken. up as a girl guy? Uh, no, no, that no, was no, much it was later. That was, was a gig. Much, <laughs> it was during the Molly period. That okay. was much later. <laughs> and then I was in a band called the 18th Century Quartet, which was sort of a put-together band meant to go overseas and be famous, and we were writing all these songs. Uh, Hans Polson was in the band. I'm popping on the microphone. That's rather good. Uh, and uh, we had some good songs, but it just, it never happened. There were too many personality conflicts. You also were part of a, an amazing scene in Melbourne, the import record market. We're talking about vinyls. Yes, we uh, sort of innocently started that because I'd been in hair for two years. That's the acting part, if you call that acting. Burger? Uh, I was, I was burger in, in the original cast of, of hair in Australia. And you had to do the thing with... with yeah, I, I was... I probably got naked in front of... Uh, um, what do you mean, many, probably? Many, well, I, did I, you get I naked? Did. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah. You got yeah. naked? Yes, for 20 seconds. How do you prepare for that? Uh, Don't think of it. Don't <laughs> well, think some, of anybody you've ever people, been out with, I would say. Some people did have a little bit of uh, preparation going on. Because you know there's I mean. that whole... There's that whole little bit under the, um, like, parachute before. That's, that's correct. Come on, you were tell, at, you, tell you us must seriously. You must five when you went, when uh, you went don't, to that don't show. Don't you worry, when, don't you worry. I had some money at the end of all of that, and I, uh, <laughs> which I would never have had if I had been in bands. That's true. And I came back to that's Melbourne, true. and I, I was starting, to, starting a family up, and I thought, I've got to get a real job. I'll open a record store, and that's, that's what I did. And it was Archie and Jugheads, and it, it was, was one of the most yeah. fabulous import shops in Melbourne. And then uh, we changed the name to Missing Link later on, had a record label, and... Uh, yeah, that was pretty iconic, still going to this day with the name at least is, is still around there. So, yeah, that was, my, that was my big thing. But I kept playing. I made some albums. Um, produced, you also produced some produced albums some for albums, uh, yeah. young upcoming artist Nick Cave? Uh, yeah, I, I was involved in the production of their first uh, stuff that they did for the label. They were already on Mushroom before that as the boys next door, however. So. I know that you're in Mobile. That's it. In New Orleans. Uh, is it down south? It's near New Orleans, yeah, it's about two Near hours. New Orleans. Tell yeah. us about uh, your vinyl shop down there and what's happening. Well, I've, I'm back to square one. I, uh, I saw all this uh, resurgence of vinyl records happening. Re sorry, records. That comes from being in the US and walking into everybody's house and saying, you got any records? And they understand what you're talking about. Um, uh, I saw this resurgence of vinyl uh, happening a few years back and thought, hmm, there's no record shop in a town of almost half a million people, I think I'm going to start one. And I had a store room full of records at that stage. 
And so I did, and uh, a whole new audience is coming along. The 20s to 30s uh, are doing what their direct parents didn't do, and that is buy vinyl. They don't want to buy CDs. They want to buy vinyl. They're downloading as, as well, but they want that tactile experience of a big old record. And you were saying that uh, also the venue, you, you, your shop, is becoming a venue for, for artists who want to perform live? Exactly. Our record shops are becoming alternative venues because there aren't any enough real ones around anymore. And, it's, of course, it's a good match as well because you can play in there and, and sell your stuff and you can do that in the afternoon. And then if you have got a nighttime gig, you get more people along during the nighttime. So we're getting uh, bands as far away as New York calling us and saying, hey, we're coming down to, to play, we want to play your record shop. And uh, we've had some pretty well-known people come through. Who? Um, well, uh, the, a band called the Royal Southern Brotherhood who've been over here for the Blues Festival is made up of one of the Neville brothers. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cyril and uh, Dwayne Orman's son, great guitar player, another great guitar player called Mike Zito. They were absolutely fantastic. They, they came and played. And the good thing is, when they're finished playing, they come and buy records from us. <laughs> <laughs> All these bands buy records. We had a band come through the other day, um, Big Sandy and the Flyright Boys. They've been out to Australia as well. And they, they weren't playing and they weren't doing it in store. But these guys were in our store for six hours. They had their little van outside. And they said, we haven't got any room in the van, but they had 78s lined up, uh, 45s and albums. E each member of the band was <laughs> took so much stuff out. And as they were leaving, uh, as I said, they were there for six hours. They said, we'll get here earlier next time. You know, Sell more. Crazy stuff. Is this happening? Um, you, you've just been in Nashville? Yes. Is there a bit of a scene happening there with oh, the there vinyl? Is. I think it's all around the world now. And, and young. What, what Keith's saying is that people between 20 and 30 are just paying homage to that time and that music and those wonderful things called albums. A and it's amazing to us now, uh, at our age, that when you make a, a record and you have it mastered, you have an option to have it played through analogue heads mm -hmm. when it's being mastered, which turns, in effect, back into a vinyl sounding record. And because yeah. people just are more sympathetic to it. it. It may not technically be better sound, but it sounds better to the human ear, and that's the whole yeah. thing. But, uh, Brian, in Nashville, you've got uh, Jack White, the White Stripes yes. guys, just elevated the whole thing to a, a new level. Mm. And I do rec I go up to Nashville and do record shows, and I've seen the change in the crowd there is just uh, oh. ginormous. Can you yeah. explain record shows to the audience? Uh, well, they're, they're where vinyl fanatics will go along and everybody will rent a table and uh, you'll sell very rare records um, in, some pla in some cases and, and just talk about it all day. Now, um, I'm trying to organise a record show in Nashville once a year which I think has the potential of being the biggest record show in the, in the US and possibly the world. Uh, and I'm enlisting the ex-president of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as helping out on this. He's now working for Gibson. And I'll be calling on uh, another Australian, Mark Moffat, who is now the head of the Americana Festival, or association, to sort of try and get this thing tagged on to one end or the other of this annual thing and it all works in together because there are new artists uh, who who are not putting their records out on CD they're putting them out on uh, on vinyl and downloads mm. and so this is the uh, the future so you're looking at that for 2014 I'd like to yeah we're okay about it and now. Uh, and if you get this up and happening you've got to let us all know here in Australia because fly over well I think <laughs> yes. people would fly over absolutely wouldn't you well, the Americana Festival is, uh, is pretty good, as Brian might be able to tell oh, you. Yes, there was an Australian uh, segment of that this year. I'll let you yes, for the first time. And a lot of our artists went over for it. Americana is an amazing genre because it's not country and it's not old, you know, has-beens or wannabes or whatever. It's this actual slice of American music which goes from roots all the way through to the very bottom of... I guess country rock, mm. and there, I was there in the 90s. I lived there in the 90s, and Americana was a very, very small thing with John Hyatt and and uh, people like that. Only a handful of artists. Now it's huge. It's one of the most powerful charts in American music right now. 
Yes. Uh, and I think there's room for Australians because we all grew up on a mixture of rock and roll and country uh, here and you can sort of slide right in there and it, you don't have to uh, forsake your heritage to be, be part of it. It can be Australiana, can be Americana. Yes, I think it's actually a celebration of heritage mm. and we have a big block of all those people right here. Yeah. Uh, I know there's an album out at the moment which celebrates all the country rock people. Uh, you're on it and I'm on it and, and there's a lot of great artists on it from that period. And what's that album called, Brian? Uh, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Silver Roads and uh, WA put it out. Yeah. We're going to have to take a short break, but we'll be back very, very shortly. Would you please thank Mr. Keith Class yes. and Brian Cat. Welcome back to Rock Down, my very special guest this evening, Mr. Brian Cadd. Thank you, thank you. Now, I, do, I don't know whether you've ever had the pleasure of meeting my two gorgeous, very mischievous, by the way. You know, I did meet him at 2 o'clock in the morning, King Street. Oh. Yes. Oh, my girl's on the town. Oh, on the town. Rock what Down, Rock Down Susie and Miss Chrissy, give them a big hand. Yes. Now listen, what happens on the tour stays on the tour. Oh, well, it happens You're sworn on King Street. Street yes, it did. Here. Now I want to talk about your shoes. Oh, do you? Check these out. They are paisley. And he bought them in Paris. In Paris. And they're the... Oh, now you're showing off. No, yeah. but they're the straightest <laughs> shoes in the whole store. They had shoes that looked like lemon... What are those things? Those Meringue lemon. pie? Yes, they had shoes like that. This, these are the straightest ones. I'm glad you didn't turn up in a lemon meringue pie shoe. <laughs> I have nothing to wear with it. No. <laughs> now, now, you say that we look like we're out of the Liberace movie. Yeah, you do. Haven't you seen it? I don't it? know why you'd say that, do you? Haven't you seen it? Are you kidding? No. You out bling him. We out blinged him. Look at this puffy little stuff. Yeah, with I know. It, I, know. I, I thought I was actually really sort of blingy, but no, girls, no. you put us to shame. We're shy flowers. I want to say that I absolutely love the single. Is it is it the single off of that? Hate yeah, yeah. and love. Hate and I love. say love and hate. That is sensational. Thank you so much. I love it. I saw it tonight and our very good mate Jason Vorher is playing on it. Yes, he is. And that yeah. is magical. So get out there and buy it, guys, because this is something much. else. Yeah. Thank you. Really honoured. Yeah. Now, uh, Miss Chrissy and I were out and about and we were over at um, the Flying Saucer Club and it's a great venue, a fantastic venue over there. And who'd we see, Miss Chrissy? Bob Starkey. Yeah. Bongo Starkey! Yeah. Hence the bling. We um, blinged up for the night because when I rang him to organise the interview, I said, do you, realize, do you know who we are? And he goes, yeah, you're the sparkly ones. <laughs> so I thought, well, well, we'll bling it up for the night. So... Um, yeah, Bob from uh, Skyhooks, as everyone would know. Fantastic gig. Um, you'll see it. Female lead vocalist, Laura Davidson, who's a mate of ours. Amazing. She hits the notes like Shirl did. Um, so I guess we'll we have a look a at that. she's a girl. And she's a girl. That's right. <laughs> they call her Graham. So um, have a look at this. This is our interview and um, hope you enjoy it. How are you? I'm okay. How are you all the better for seeing you? And likewise. In your glitter? And we match. We yeah, match. Yeah. How good was that? I reckon I had it first. I reckon you might have. No, because <laughs> I saw you when I was 14 at Heidelberg Boys Tech. Wow. And it was like 1974 or something like that. 73. What were you doing at the Boys Tech? <laughs> well, I went to an all-girls school and we had the <laughs> school dance. And this band Skyhawks were there, and I've still got the little ticket stub. And I said, oh, they were fabulous. Was that with Cheryl or was that with Steve? Oh, I can't remember. can't remember back oh, that long. Okay. It was so long ago. Yeah. yeah. 
I can't remember the gig either, don't worry. <laughs> in the, the, the school hall at Heidelberg Boys Tech. So that was my first memory It's been a you. while. Just a few you, years. It has yeah. been a while, only about 40 years. Now, you, you did some great numbers tonight, and a lot of your numbers covered, um, I remember growing up and thinking all teen issues, you know, born calling mm. and stuff like that. Mm. Was that intentional? Or of course, it, yeah. yeah. You were identifying with the youth of the time? Well, it's, it, look, it was, it was Greg McCain's songwriting, of course, but, uh, yeah, he, was, he, he really wanted to talk about Australia and Australian places. And, um, you know, because, it, because it, you know, that was definitely something that he re- realised that hadn't been really done, except for, you know, like, I've been everywhere, man, or something like that. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it was intentional. And so we've got that classic little trilogy. We've got Turak Cowboy, Cal- we've got Born, Born Calling, Calling, and we've got Carton, Light on Street Limbo. Light on Street Limbo. Yeah. And I guess at the time, because we're looking at the 70s, a pretty innocent time compared to now, and it was pretty big smoke for young people to have a song like that and identify with it. Oh, look, it's, yeah, it was, you know, it was a real fun time. But in the 70s, hey, everybody, it was the best time in Australia's history. Yeah. <laughs> so you've had Laura, who's a lovely, gorgeous friend of ours. Oh, is she a friend of yours? Yeah, okay. yeah, we love Laura. Yeah. And she's been doing some vocals. And what a magical sound she's got. It's a good combination. When Cheryl left, left, I actually really wanted to get a girl in the band, and I was thinking of Susie DeMarchi. Oh, um, love her. But uh, now I realise there's no way she could handle it because there's not many girls that can get that high, you know. Shirley's really got a high voice, and, and, and as you can hear, it's yeah. like... It's, it's like uh, and and, and, and uh, I call her Graham, right? Graham. When Graham, she can, she's about the only girl <laughs> I've known who can actually get those notes and belt them out, you know. Now, you replaced... Did you replace your older brother in I did, yeah. Skyhooks originally? Yeah. Where did he go? My brother decided to leave the Skyhooks uh, because he had a, a gig uh, with Joe Camilleri backing a stripper up the west coast of Australia. I think that sounded all right. Right, so he, he jumped and, uh, and I went and saw his last gig. I was 21 at the time and I, I, just, I, I just received this little uh, stereo cassette recorder and my brother said, oh, can you give me a lift? to the gig and I said yeah sure I'll bring my new recorder out and I'll record it and so I did that and they played the last gig and I said I'm Peter I think this sounds great and, you know the, there's a whole stack of tunes I just loved and uh, I said do you think I should audition he said oh well, I'll give it a go whatever and so I did and of course I wasn't nearly as good a guitarist as my brother I couldn't even hold a plectrum and uh, so anyhow um, McCain said oh yeah okay but I think he just I got the gig because there was no one else. <laughs> and also I had a van. And then I did my first gig at, at, at uh, I think it was the Super Show out there in Research. And, uh, you know, the long hair. And I put on this red velvet outfit. And all the girls loved it. And, and they said as much to Greg. And he thought, oh, I mean, we might be onto something here. You know, it's yeah. a, he can't play so good, but he looks pretty good. So uh. and A million hit records later and all these years later and we're here together. Yeah. I'm so stoked to meet you. You know that. I'm going to meet you too, don't I? <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. This is Rock Down Over and Out. And you are you. on Rock Down. Rock Down rocks. <laughs> we were really excited to meet him. Um, we, we get to meet a lot of artists. We got excited to meet this bloke. I think it was last year, the first time we interviewed you. This is the thrill of doing Out and About. Miss Chrissy and I go out to venues. We're here to tell you, get your butts off the seats and go out and about. Because there's artists like him, like this guy, like Miss Wendy. And they you know... They're not around forever. Go and see these shows. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like people, people take it for granted. No, I'm, not, I'm not feeling so well. <laughs> people take it for granted and you can walk into a venue and pay 20 bucks or, or some venues for free and you get to see some of the finest musicians in the world. So no excuse, yeah. Australia has the finest musicians in the world. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Rock down. Welcome back to Rock Down, coming to you live from Musicland. My very, very special guest tonight is Mr. Brian Cadd. Thank you. Fabulous. What a great night. How what a fabulous. great night. Have you noticed anything about us? A little bit of bling from Miss Chrissy? It's hard, to, it's hard to tell, isn't it? I don't have a lot to work with here. <laughs> Could be like a just... No. 
That's better. Oh, hang on. Yeah. That's, that's better. Ah! Oh, no. Let's, but, get, well, let's get back to things all serious, which we're totally yeah. not. Yeah. Um, tell us what you've been up to. And, and, and I know that in the last couple of years, you've been spending a lot of time in Paris. Yes. Paris. Gay Paris. What well, have you been doing? Oh, it's really a, a labour of love. We just go there a few a few months a year and, and have enjoyed it for a number of years now. But this last time we were here, oh, we were there for three weeks before we went to, to Nashville and we, try, we tried to buy, not us, but a group of us, a group of people, tried to buy the Honky Chateau. What is the Honky Chateau? That's where Elton recorded Honky Chateau and... Yellow Brick Road, or whatever it was, and and uh, all sorts of people, um, Cat Stevens and and uh, Bowie and is it in a, Paris? Over a hundred albums recorded there during in the Paris. Season. It's thirty miles north of Paris, and it's the most astounding thing. It's got two two big studios in it. One of which was a room originally created for Mozart by George Sand, who was the gal that was his girlfriend. Anyway, so we put a whole bunch of lunatics together and we went over there to buy it. And we, well, you know, Amanda did. And then we <laughs> got really close and we got pipped at the post. How much? Well, the guy eventually paid. Oh, how different. Oh, we didn't even get a chance to put a bid in. This bid came from this English musician in uh, Dubai. So we missed it by just that much. But the good news is that he's going to restore the, all the studios and everything to the way they were. That this was, a great that was an interesting thing you just said, an English musician from Dubai. I know. There can't be that many, can there? Really? Oh, not no. with that kind of oh, money. Oh, not with that kind of money. But anyway, so what did it go for? Are you allowed to say well, or are you not yeah, allowed no, to say? No, no, I can. It went for 1.1 million euro. But when you think about a whole chateau with two studios... That's not and a lot. It was, in, it was a bit depleted. It hadn't been used for a while. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, that's pretty reasonable, isn't it? That's really reasonable. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so could. it's not going to be Chateau Aussie? No, it's not going to be Chateau Brion. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> good. But uh, we, we uh, are ever hopeful that it will come, it'll come back to where it was because it's a really amazing historical building. So as a result of that, I went directly to um, Nashville and ate everything deep fried on the menu for... <laughs> Two weeks. What were you doing in Nashville? I was eating deep fried. You know what? Over there, when you order a meal, you go, I'll have the shrimp appetizer and I'll have the steak and, you know, whatever, and then I'll have the salad and the ice cream and the pears. And they put it all on a tray and then they put the whole tray in a deep fry. In a deep fry? Mm. I'm kidding, but it's like that. I actually it's don't. So I don't think you're kidding. No, I'm not actually. I don't think you're kidding. But anyway, we had a great time, and I, and I wrote with um, a lot of a lot of really nice writers. A lot of young. Here's a strange thing that's happening: a lot of young Nashville writers who are signed, sorry, artists who are signed to labels. And the big thing now, for some reason, is a kind of a mixture of the Eagles and Jackson Brown and Linda Ronstadt. They're the kind of directions that these young kids are going. But, of course, they were one or two. When all or not writing. even born. Or not even born. So they find an old guy who actually writes like that. <laughs> and, and it's great because I write all these young guys and we sort of make those records over again. It's a fantastic time at the moment. There. So it's all, all re resurgence of, uh, yeah, of mean, like, the 60s, 70s? Yeah, or yeah, really, the early 70s. I mean, 70s, the, the yeah. favourite record in Nashville... Sorry, I started to do that. The favourite record in Nashville at the moment is already gone by the Eagles. I mean, you hear it all over the place. Everyone plays it. And to me, to me and to you, to a lesser degree, that's our youth. That's what we grew up on. Isn't There's it fantastic sort of that it's all just gone in a circle? Doing it again. Everyone wants to sound like Linda Ronstadt. I want to thank you so much. It's my buddy. Yay. Yeah, it's my buddy. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great to be here. You know what? And it's great to see live music television go on. There's not enough of it. Thank you. We're going to take you out with a film clip. <laughs> you intro it. Ah. Sharky and the Cadman. Um. <laughs> and the single, Hate and Love.
Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. See you next time. Woo! <laughs>